Days Gone is the newest first-party exclusive for the PlayStation 4. And while it's not a masterpiece like God of War, or even third-party exclusives such as Spider-Man, it is still a very fun game. This is Matt with Hanley Gaming, and this is my honest review for Days Gone. With Days Gone, there are some things that I liked, some things I wasn't too fond of, and some things where I'm a bit in the middle. I'm undecided. And this review is going to have some minor spoilers that happen early on in the game, so I'm going to try to keep the spoilers to a minimum in case you haven't played the game. Uh, with that said, let's start with the story. So, you play as a man named... Deacon St. John, you're a biker, you're part of the Mongrel MC, and you, your best friend Boozer, and your wife, Sarah, are trying to escape the city where an outbreak has happened, and, you know, people are going nuts and attacking each other, and, you know, you're trying to find a way out and keep your wife safe, and she ends up getting stabbed in the stomach. So you find an evac chopper and you're explaining to them that she is not infected, that she's been stabbed and she needs medical help. So you end up getting her on the helicopter, but there's not enough room for all of you. So you leave her there on the helicopter to get to a safe place. You ask them where they're going and then you and Boozer make your way over because he's injured. He can't go by himself. So, you know, you're helping your friend out and you're like, OK, I'll see you when I, I get there. So then that's when the game starts, after that, uh, that cutscene. Um, and right away you start by riding on the motorcycle. Alright, so basically the story is an outbreak has happened, people are getting infected. They're not quite zombies, they're smarter than zombies and, you know, they, they sprint, they climb. So it's just that they're very animalistic in their behavior and they want to eat you so you know they're they're attracted by uh, bright lights and loud noises as well so uh, let's get into the gameplay so how do you travel when you're in a post-apocalyptic world where loud noises attract what wants to eat you how about a very loud motorcycle? That's what they went with here. Yeah, you know, I, I get you're a biker, so the motorcycle is going to be important. And it is. There's a lot of uh, mechanics at play with the motorcycle. But personally, I I don't know if I would have went with a motorcycle. You know, I, I guess it's a good thing that they did because it is a pretty large world and it would be hard to get around without it but it's so damn loud and it attracts everything around you so you know there's the thing with this game the the types of gameplay in it it's it's a stealth game it's a survivor game and it's an action game all rolled into one so you're constantly scavenging for items you're trying to you know stealth your way so you don't have to get in big firefights and then there are of course big firefights and if you've seen the trailer, you have to run from hordes of freakers. So, I, I, I've heard that the hordes get as big as 500 uh, freakers per horde sometimes. So, that that's pretty impressive that they can get that all on screen. But, they're attracted to loud noises and you're riding around a motorcycle that is extremely loud. And then... Okay, so thing with the motorcycle when you first start riding it it's very very touchy so you just move the thumbstick slightly and you're 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 swerving on the road so it does get some getting used to but once you get used to it you're you're all right it's it's not too bad um now the motorcycle is very important when you die the motorcycle is your respawn point uh, your mo your motorcycle takes damage, which you have to repair or take into uh, some of the camps that are around, um, survivor camps, and they'll re 
repair it for you for a, a fee. Uh, you have to keep an eye on, on your fuel because it does consume fuel and I personally find it drinks it like water. It goes really fast. And so you're always on the lookout for for gas for your for your bike. Um, if you want to fast travel and you've got a safe way to get somewhere and you don't have enough gas in your motorcycle to f to drive to that spot, you cannot fast travel there. So that's another thing. Like you unlock fast travel spots, and most of these spots do have gas in them. So you know th th there is enough gas if you. It, if you know where to look like sometimes you'll be like if you run out of gas you'll have to walk find gas then walk it back to your bike without getting killed by freakers and you know infected wolves and, and other things that are going to attack you in this game so it's not a good idea to run out of gas uh, thankfully you can start upgrading your tank earlier on in the game so you don't run out as easily because the uh, the upgrade holds more gas so you know there, there is that and also if you're at a camp you can also refuel your motorcycle there for a fee if you can't find gas on your way over but once you start unlocking Nero checkpoints and, and, and things like that they have gas lying around there somewhere and the gas always respawns in the same place, which is nice. So if you remember where you got the gas the first time you're there, you'll be able to get the gas the second time you're there. And to save the game, you can either quick save at your motorcycle when you're not in combat, or you can go into a Nero checkpoint and sleep, which will save your game and also advance the time of day. So if you're playing in the daytime, you go to sleep, it will be nighttime. If you're playing in the nighttime, you go to sleep, it will be daytime when you wake up. And the Freakers are stronger at night. So that, that kind of reminded me of Dying Light, where at nighttime they're stronger. Um, in the game, it rains a lot, and uh, the Freakers come out more often when it's raining. And in the daytime, they're you know hibernating not all of them but you know that's what they say they're hibernating so if you're going to take out their nests which are littered across the world and you have to take out their nests that will give you some more uh, fast travel points if you take out their nests um, you'll and you can fast travel through that area as well if there's a nest there you have to drive through and not get attacked on your very loud motorcycle <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it, in the daytime, they're hibernating, so when you're burning their nests, you'll have to fight off more than at nighttime when there's not as many in the nest. You'll only have to kill a few, but, again, they're stronger. There will be more wandering around near the nest, so, you know, it, it, it's give or take. Either handle them before you take out the nest and handle a few, or just handle them all at once when you take out the nest. So now let's look at combat. So you got your melee combat, where you find weapons around the world, like baseball bats, two by fours, machetes, and you know they're they're great for doing damage, more damage than your your knife on enemies. And then you can find recipes to craft upgraded weapons. So if you have a baseball bat and you find a recipe for a spike baseball bat. And you find nails, you got yourself a spiked baseball bat, you craft it. Or you could do the same with 2x4. Now, there's also a skill that you can unlock pretty early on in the game where you can repair your melee weapons. So, if you've grown, if you've grown fond of a, a weapon that does a lot of damage, then you can repair it when it gets damaged. And yes, they do get damaged, and they get damaged pretty quickly. So you find scrap, you can repair your weapons before they break. If they break and you forgot to uh, repair them beforehand, then you, you're out of luck. you got to go and find the stuff to make a new weapon. If you like that weapon that you had, say, a spiked bat, then you got to go find a, another bat, more nails, craft it again, and hopefully remember to repair it before it 
hits that breaking point. Now, with the uh, the gun mechanics, this is where I'm not too fond of the game. Um, th this is a, a very big drawback for me. Say you have a rifle, you know, one one shot rifle, and uh, there's an enemy like ten feet in front of you. If you aim at his face, you're not always going to hit him. If you hit him, it's a headshot. He's down. You know, or you could possibly hit him in the shoulder or chest and not really do much damage. Now, I don't know why they would have done this when this game is part action and you're going to have hordes of 500 freakers chase you at a time. You got to take out camps which have like upwards of 10 people guarding it and you don't want to have to always do stealth. But the game sort of forces you to do stealth. You know, hide in the bushes, call them over, you know, melee attack to kill them. Or like you, you press triangle and it's a stealth kill. So, you know, it, it's almost forcing you to have to play like that because when you get in a gunfight, you know, ammo is scarce and the aiming doesn't work. You know, I, I'm, I'm shooting at a guy and I'm not even killing him or I'm shooting at a group of freakers that are coming at me and you see the crosshair on their face and when you're firing it's not even hitting them and it's very frustrating because then you die. Because you're trying to, like, you have eight of them running at you and you start shooting and it looks like you're aiming at their face but it's not doing a thing. They're not reacting at all. So it's, whether it's humans or freakers, you know, so you know you're not hitting them because I then pull up my pistol and I shoot them point blank in the face and it says headshot and they're down. And I've shot them from a distance uh, a couple times, um, mainly with arrows. My arrows are, they come in very handy. I've gotten used to the, uh, the shooting of the bow to a point. Um, like I've shot in people that were behind cover and you just see like the top of their head. And I fired bolts into their into the top of their heads. So, you know, I've gotten better with the crossbow, which takes a while to reload each shot over, say, a pistol, which isn't as accurate. Um, but the pistol I find even more accurate than than the primary weapons, such as rifles. So, like for instance, I had a sniper shooting at me from up in the tree, and I pulled out my pistol my uh, sidearm, I took one shot and he died. Up in the tree, from a long distance with a sniper rifle. I killed him with one shot from my pistol. If I shot at him with my with my rifle, I probably wouldn't have hit him and just attracted a bunch of freakers to where I was. Now for the visuals. Days Gone has a lot of cutscenes, much like Red Dead Redemption 2. They add up to about six hours which is quite a bit and I find the graphics the facial expressions everything it's done pretty well there's nice visuals for the wilderness and you know the enemies you encounter everything goes pretty well smoothly um, they've got good weather effects but there are the occasional visual glitch that I've come across. Uh, nothing major. Uh, the main issue I had visually was one time I went to uh, a Nero checkpoint. I got the uh, stamina upgrade. And every time you get a stamina, health, or, fo or focus upgrade, it shows in white on the top of your screen for like a second and it goes away just to show you that your health has gone up, or your focus, or your stamina, whichever you've chosen, goes up. And it came up, and it didn't go away. So, I drove to the next mission, went through the cutscenes, and after the cutscene, it was back. I quick saved, it didn't go away. Like, I, I tried a bunch of different things. Um, so, with that... I could not see what was happening at the very top of the screen, and I couldn't see my next objective, because it, it shows you on the top left corner of the screen your next objective, and that was covered. 
Um, I actually had to end up turning the game off, like closing the application and then restarting it, and that did work. Uh, but it was very strange. It was there for quite a while until I decided to turn the game off, because I even tried reloading the save, and it was still there. <laughs> yeah, but turning the game off and turning it back on, that, that worked. Now, overall, do I think this is a good game? Yes, definitely try if you haven't tried it. I do think it's a good game. I'm still a bit disappointed because of that high bar that the other exclusives have set. But still a worthwhile game. If you haven't tried, give it a shot. If you have, leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Do you think I hit the nail on the head, or do you think I was off on my review of this game? Remember, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on notifications. You can also hit that share button, and you can share a link to this video on either Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, what? later.